how people can stay relevant in general. Like, how do you think people can do that? For a YouTuber, just make good videos. People overthink it. If you just make videos people like to watch and do that over a long period, they'll just, you know, you'll become so ingrained in them. You're mm. Like we were talking about before, you're like SpongeBob. Like, I haven't watched SpongeBob <laughs> in eight years, but I, yeah. I could probably quote random lines and yeah. picture random scenes because I just consume so much. It's pretty simple. What, what makes the best video possible? I mean, like, I, I hate to keep coming back to this point, but that's all that matters. What makes the best video possible? What will people enjoy the most? What's something original and unique? Blah, blah, blah. You know, that they've never seen before. And that's, that's kind of really it. You have to love what you do because it's going to take you a long time frame, like 10 years to get where you can do it for a job. And if you don't let, love what you do, you're going to quit after year two of not making money or year three or year four. And that tends like an average. Some people it's going to take you 20 years. Some it's going to take five. You know what I mean? It's very hard to find someone who's grinding content for 10 years, surrounded himself with other like-minded people, really worked intelligently and smart and tried to improve something. Every single video, they improved something and they just were really obsessed over that long of a time frame and isn't making it at least more than the average American. You know what I mean? If someone, the way I like to look at it, like if, if someone's does put a lot of time into a video and a lot of money and all this stuff of course it's going to get more views than if someone just does a q a on their couch like when people say well why are long form videos that are really high production all of a sudden doing well now it's because it's more interesting like if you only have 15 minutes you're going to invest it in the big video not this little one that just they mumble i'm a firm believer that it's much easier to hypothetically get 10 million views on one video than a hundred thousand on a hundred and part of why it's much easier in my opinion is like if you make a really good video it's just so evergreen and it never dies because YouTube, when you open up YouTube and look at the videos, they're just serving you whatever they, they think you'll like the best. And so if you just make a great video uh, and it's constantly just above every other video, even two years down the road, then they'll just keep serving it and never stop, which is why it's much easier to make one great video than a bunch of mediocre ones. If you really want to be the best in the goddamn world, it's like Michael Jordan says, you're not trying to get 1% better, you're trying to get 1,000% better. And if you do that every day, it adds up. What matters is that we make the best videos possible and that people enjoy our videos. Yeah. Because if you do that, the number will go up. And I've kind of like learned throughout time. I used to obsess over different things. I want to make this money so I can hire these people to do these videos. And I want to, I want to have a high sub count. I want to have this. I want to have that. What I've kind of realized for being a YouTuber is everything you want will come if you just obsess over making the best videos possible. You'll make more money. You'll get more views. You'll get more subscribers. You'll get more recognition for your peers. You'll get whatever it is you crave. If you just make great videos, you'll get it. And so like ever since I pointed my focus on that and only that, everything just kind of exploded. If we're giving advice, something a lot of people forget is like unsuggested on phones. Thumbnails are really fucking small. Mm -hmm. People are editing thumbnails full blown on their mm -hmm. computer. And when you shrink it down, you can't see all these little things. So yeah, we do that. We make I always do that. that. Yeah. I do the thumbnail, so I always make it tiny. Then there you go. Perfect. Yeah. I like to just uh, take a screenshot of my phone and then just put my thumbnail over a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And then I can just see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get a good... Put your thumbnail over a thumbnail. Yeah, exactly. And then just look at it on your phone and just be like, if I was a normal person, would I care to clean mm -hmm. on it? You just start to notice patterns. Like the thumbnails on the most viewed videos or videos that go super viral tend to be clear, tend to not have much clutter, tend to be pretty simple. Titles tend to be less than 50 characters. Intros tend to be this. Stories tend to be this. And you just kind of like, after you see those thousands and then tens of thousands of the time, it just starts to click in your head. This is what it looks like, you know? No matter what you're doing, if you just obsess over making the greatest product possible, like in the long run, you'll beat out anyone else who worries about other stuff. I think for most smaller channels, like, if they're pulling a thousand views a video and they upload a video every day for a hundred days, they'll pull a hundred thousand views. But I, I would recommend you just think of a really good idea, one that people genuinely want to watch, put a lot of fucking time into the video, and you can pull a hundred thousand views in a week. You, you kind of see what I say? Because I, most people that I talk to, because I like to count some small channels sometimes, just get in the motions of just whatever, you know? And it's just like, if you just took a step back, I haven't even uploaded in the last week. I don't care. You know, it's not like it's that big of a deal. Like, and you just make a kick-ass video, like, you could, like, pull exponentially so many more views, you know, with so much less effort, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just do things that people want to watch and put a lot of effort into your videos. You'll get more views than if you just, you know, half ASS, I don't know if I can carry this, videos every day. What's interesting is the longer people watch something, the more likely they are to keep watching. So you don't have to try as hard in the hypothetically back half of a video as you do in the front. Like, even right now, we're so deep into this where... A lot of people listening are probably just going to keep listening relatively close to the end unless we just have a really boring part of this conversation because they're just they're just in it they're they're immersed um and so a big like to really boil it down to a simple level you just want to get people where they're immersed in the content and then just kind of hold them there when people are like well the video it does well because you're popular 
we can go into new languages with people who have never heard of me and still get giant 10 million view videos just because the videos are good. You get a new editor, you just want to, the first video they edit, you just literally want to sit behind them and watch them and just critique them. And you want to do that a few times. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, they just get the rhythm of your style. Like, yeah. like you just uh, do like a couple of reviews before they go live. You 100% should. It makes no sense. For you. you can like draw little lines and go as deep as you want into how to get people to click and how to get people to watch. I mean, essentially by studying the algorithm, you'll learn that you're more studying human psychology, right? What do humans want to watch? What do they find enjoying? Like, but he's right. You know, like this part was a little fake. This scene was a little drawn out. Could have done this a little bit better. Um, and it's like, that's what you need. No matter, you, there's no such thing as a perfect video. Like someone should always call you and it on your video because it could be better. Because imagine if someone does it every video and you upload hundreds, if not a thousand videos over the next 10 years and every single time someone's critiquing you and you're applying what they're critiquing. Like imagine the compound effect over that time span. It's, it's invaluable. Anytime you say the word algorithm, just replace it with audience and it works perfectly. Like the algorithm didn't like that video. No, the audience didn't like that video. Now, you know, because literally that's it. If people are clicking and watching, then it gets promoted more. And that's all, that's literally all the algorithm does is reflect what the people want. 2AT. And if you deny that, you just make terrible videos that are trying to find a scapegoat. Like, uh, I, there's a reason everyone loves YouTube and, you know, spends hours every single day on it. It's something a lot of creators don't do. Like, they'll just do a brand deal out of the blue. They'll just be filming a video and then around the three minute mark, just start talking about a random company. Yeah. And you, I feel like, if you don't want viewers to click away and you want people to not get pissed off and call you a sellout, you got to find a way to integrate into content and ideally use the money in the video to make it better. Like as the easiest thing you do when you do a brand deal is just tell people how you're using money from the brand deal to make your content better. And if you do that, like no one cares. Now they're supporting you for it. And you go from being a sellout to like, oh, I'm doing this to make better videos for you guys. You know, it's like if I had like the perfect friend group, I'd go hang out with other entrepreneurs. I'd go hang out with people and it's like, if, if right next door there's another YouTuber, I just walk over there and be like, yo, teach me something. That, at the end of the day, is what I love the most.